Hotlines. Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com with another quick tip for families in intensive care. So yesterday I was talking to a gentleman who had an inquiry about his 63-year-old mum. And she is in, has been in ICU for seven days now. She had one valve replacement and one valve repair, which uh, from experience is usually prolonged cardiac surgery. Uh, you know, the chest will need to be opened. Often patients end up on a bypass machine or ECMO for a period of time. The lungs are collapsed during that period. And uh, when patients come back uh, after this type of surgery, you know, under normal circumstances, if they're stable, if surgery went well, they usually can be extubated within 24 to 48 hours, assuming they are hemodynamically stable, assuming there's no post-operative bleeding, and then they can often be sent to a hospital ward uh, or hospital floor to get on with their recovery. Now, he's saying that his mom has been in ICU for seven days and that her recovery is very slow, although she is off the ventilator he says she looks very puffy she's very slow to recover you know and for whatever reason the ICU is still keeping her under again normal circumstances this particular lady should be back to the ward so there must be some form of complications that he's not aware of and that I haven't been able to answer because simply you know he doesn't have enough clinical information he doesn't have access to medical records and we haven't spoken to doctors and nurses yet. And that comes back to that the biggest challenge for families in intensive care is simply that they don't know what they don't know. They don't know what to look for. They don't know what questions to ask. They don't know their rights and they don't know how to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care. This is exactly what this gentleman is dealing with. But coming back to his 63-year-old mother after a cardiac surgery, so I would assume there must have been some form of complication, maybe an irregular heart rhythm, maybe some bleeding, maybe some electrolyte disturbances um, post-surgery. Also maybe um, some irregular heart uh, rhythm like atrial fibrillation um, as a possible cause that they might uh, need to treat in the first place. But he says, you know, she's really slow. She's very slow to speak, she's not eating and drinking yet, you know, she seems to be in a lot of pain and that is another issue after cardiac surgery. You know, patients have drains in their chest at least for a couple of days or so and they can be very painful on top of the sternotomy, basically the cut on the chest. So, but if someone has, is in ICU for seven days off the ventilator uh, but is still not ready to go to a hospital ward, there must be other issues again, such as maybe atrial fibrillation, maybe any other irregular heart rhythm, maybe she still has pace, pacing wires in situ, maybe she's still paced, as I said, electrolyte disturbances. Also, um, he says she's very slow to speak, but she is obeying commands, her brain is intact. Um, and that could simply be, you know, a slow recovery from all the sedation, all the opiates she had. You know, it's, it's tough going through IC after cardiac surgery, especially if there's a, sort of a delay in the recovery. So that is my quick tip for today. I hope that helps and helps you understand what should be happening after cardiac surgery. Again, under normal circumstances, out of ICU within one to two days and back to cardiac ward or cardiac floor. Now, if you have a loved one in intensive care, go to intensivecarehotline.com, call us on one of the numbers on the top of our website, or simply send us an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com. Also, have a look at our membership for families in intensive care at intensivecaresupport.org. There you have access to me and my team 24 hours a day in a membership area and via email, and we answer all questions intensive care related. Now, if you need a medical record review for your loved one in intensive care in real time, uh, we can help you with that. We can interpret clinical data in real time while your loved one is in intensive care. And if you need it after intensive care, we can help you with that as well. Um, if you have unanswered questions, if you need closure, or if you are suspecting medical negligence, please contact us as well for a medical record review. Now, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, for regular updates for families in intensive care, share the video with your friends and families, click the like button, click the notification bell and comment below what you want to see next or what questions and insights you have from this video. Thanks for watching.
This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveGuardLine.com and I'll talk to you in a few days. Thank you.